Speak that name tonight. There is no one like you, Jesus. There is no one like you, Jesus. Come on, isn't he amazing? Come on, can you just lift up your voices tonight? Come on, just audibly, can you bless the Lord all over this room? Come on, from the front to the back. Come on, no matter why we're here tonight, we know that the Lord has something for each and every one of us. And still the truth is today that Jesus went about doing good and healing all that were sick and oppressed of the enemy. Oh, I tell you, he's so good. Oh, we worship him. Come on, I don't want to go too quickly tonight. I just want to worship Him. Oh, you're amazing. You're amazing. You're amazing. Sorapaya. Just go ahead. over 24 years of pastoring the different changes the different things that happen in people's lives you know there are many times throughout life everything's so good with us physically right we don't ever think that we need medication we don't ever think that we need a touch from God we don't even think that we need healing but yet we've learned over all these years to confess that healing is the children's bread. And then there comes times in our lives, you know, where things are just not as good. We see sickness, there's no respecter of persons. 
doesn't matter if you're five years of age or 55 years of age. There are certain things along life's journey that can happen to people physically. Aren't you glad tonight that salvation provided not only forgiveness of sins, but for healing, for all diseases, for all sicknesses, for anything that this world could ever throw at us, for anything the enemy could ever bring our direction. We have this promise that by Jesus' stripes, we are healed. I want you to shout that out tonight. By Jesus' stripes, we are healed. Say it again, by Jesus' stripes, we are healed. You know, I have the awesome privilege of being the pastor of this great growing work. And every single week, every single service, we meet people who are falling more in love with the Lord Jesus, more than what they've ever before. And many more and more people are learning that it's just not about coming to church. It's about the promise of hope. And it's the realization that Jesus did not just provide just a little salvation package for us, but he provided for us life. He provided for us healing. He provided for us soteria. He provided for us everything that pertains unto life and godliness. And that means if you're not too good, things are about to get better. If things are a little sick, I believe that you're about to get more well than what you've ever been sick. Come on, let me just minister to you a minute or two. Pastor Billy will be out in just a few minutes. But I believe that God is in the business in these days of touching his people again. And I believe that no matter how bad it is, God can turn it around. Any believers in this room tonight, I want you to lift your hands in the air and begin to bless Him. Begin to praise Him. Come on, we have the package of salvation. He's a great God and He loves us with an everlasting love. He came to give us life and that life in absolute abundance. Oh my God, when He saw us from beginning, I'm telling you to the end, He saw His great plan for each and every one of us. When we sing it tonight that He is amazing, He is more. God. He is the Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, and He is the altogether lovely one. He is the bright and morning star. He is the rose of Sharon. He is the healing balm of Gilead. And when He hung on the cross for you and me, He provided for us. I'm telling you, with His stripes, we are healed. And He was pierced, and His blood flowed freely. So tonight, we declare there's healing in this place. Tonight we believe it, that we will never be the same again and we will leave here differently on a Monday night at the beginning of spring. You are amazing. Let me hear your voices tonight. precious brother in the way into church tonight and I said how's your wife he says pastor they have sent her home for hospice and I just looked in his eyes and I says we agree Jesus can turn this around We're 
we're not here to have a meeting. We're here to meet with him. And this is not about a man in a natural sense, but this is about the King of glory. This week, by the divine leading of the Lord, we not only have put on these evening meetings, but we've also incorporated morning sessions. I didn't know that Pastor Billy does healing schools in different places. And people pay something like 180 or $200 just to go to healing school. And I was talking to Pastor Billy on my way here and I said, you know, my heart this week is that people would just hear something. And I said, that's the reason that I wanted these morning sessions on so that it's just not about people coming to an evening service, but yet people get a reality and that they get this word that is final authority, that no matter what disease is coming against your body, Jesus provided for you healing, divine health. And so as pastor, and I know we people visiting from different places this week, you are so welcome in this place. But every single week I get to pastor the most wonderful group of people that a pastor could ever pastor. And I'm invested And the reason that I wanted these meetings on was not just to have meetings. You must judge me. What I'm interested in is to see people's lives changed. Just lift your hands all over this room. People from different backgrounds, different denominational thoughts, different cultures. We're so used to coming to meetings, but I implore you these next few days that this is not a waste of my time, nor Pastor Billy's, nor the Ministry of Helps that are here to serve you in any capacity we can to make this week be one of the most memorable weeks of your life. But I pray beyond the trimmings and trappings of the meeting that you meet with the one and true living God and you receive from him what it is that he died to make available for you. So we're just not here to praise. We're just not here to worship. There's people in this room and people that are watching and they need God to intervene. And so every one of us are gonna pray and we're gonna stand in agreement. And we're not gonna leave Pastor Billy up here on his own. And as a family tonight, as a body tonight, we're gonna to work with him. Can I have a big amen? And so whether it's you up here or whether it's somebody else up here, we're gonna make it that we're all together going to agree that people are gonna leave here healed and delivered, that people are gonna leave here with their miracles. Somebody give the Lord praise and honor and glory, come on. The expectation is so strong in this room. I can sense his anointing. So tonight, I speak the blessing over you that in this place, just begin to pray with me in the spirit all over this room. Let me hear your voices. Come on. This may be Monday night healing service. We don't need to be mumbling. We need simbola rostamai. Welcome to church. Welcome to Millennial. Hallelujah. This Bruce and his precious wife, come on on out tonight. Come on, keep praying. Keep praying. Take the hand of the person beside you. Reach across the aisles right now. Come on, reach across the aisles. 
Come on, lift up your voices, lift up your voices. Samara Tavambre has to. Oh, Salaman Sia Prapada Solomon Solomoye. Sia Stamine Stiam Brahma Stomal. Father, in this place tonight, we give you full reign. Father, everyone watching online that could not come, people that said that they wished they could be here, but they were too sick to come. Father, we believe it right now that through these cameras, people are being touched by your presence. That tonight, Father God, start something this week that will never stop in the name of Jesus. As we go through this night and into tomorrow morning and into tomorrow night, into Wednesday morning and Wednesday night, into Thursday morning and Thursday night, into Friday morning and Friday night, we declare that the healing power of Jesus Christ is in this room and coming through these cameras in the name of Jesus. Come on, lift your voices. Lift that hand of the person beside you. Come on, begin to pray for them right now. Pray for the ones beside you fervently. In the name of Jesus. Come on, we're here as a family tonight. We're here as the body of Christ tonight. And even if you're here and you've never accepted Jesus as your Lord, tonight is your night that we welcome you to the kingdom of God. so wonderful so wonderful so wonderful As we go through these services, my prayer for you is this too, that you get to know someone that you never knew before and that precious new relationships are formed in the presence of God and in the house of Almighty God. It's so wonderful to have you all here tonight. Well, turn around and bless somebody and greet somebody, shake hands with somebody. Amen, and make sure that somebody knows that they are loved in Jesus' precious name. It's so wonderful to have you both back. Amen. Thank you, guys. Praise the Lord.
Don't make up a song now. <laughs> what do you ruin it for? We had five different songs. <laughs> oh, I thought you'd practice that by now. Come on, everything. Oh, ev yeah, every is. There you go. I, I can tell we probably have 30% of the people hitchhiking tonight. That means you're letting 70% of the people make all the noise. So whenever I say, let's give God the praise, we're only hearing probably 70%. And the rest of you are just acting like, hey, mm -hmm. what are you saving that energy for? Who are you going to give that energy for this time on Monday night? We're in church. You're in revival to have church on Monday night. Come on. But, you know, we really realize he does the healing. We realize he's the healer. But what we don't realize is that he listens for each of us, not all, just all of us. We accept that a personal Savior, He always will be that. 
And he keeps things on that level with you. Just because we're in this corporate crowd here doesn't give you the right to just, you know, get duct tape on your mouth. I mean, because we really, celebration makes the, the anointing linger. It'll follow you home. It'll get in your front seat. It, it'll hide in your closet. Yeah, I mean it. I mean it. I mean, because if all we can do is just celebrate here, then when you get there, out there and then you wonder why this things go south. And the Holy Ghost is thinking, where did my worshiper go? Where did my celebratory person go? This is supposed to get on you. I don't know about you, but I'm being ruined by being in his presence so much that I can't wait till I'm in that presence again the next time. And I realized I can't wait for a meeting to do it. And maybe the, the keyboard player won't be there that night or maybe the choir doesn't show up. So I cultivate a new habit. I cultivate. Somebody says, Billy Burke, you're just so blessed that you've just the gift you have. I said, no, 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 wait a minute, wait a minute. You act like I don't cultivate anything. You make me out to be a lazy person who just stands up here and sings a couple of courses of hallelujah and everything happens. You cultivate. You will never carry in life what you want. You will never carry in life what you desire. But you will carry whatever you're cultivating. Whatever you're rehearsing day in and day out and what music's going through you, what thoughts are going through your head, that's the atmosphere and the climate you live in. Aren't you glad you can change that? You don't have to buy a new house to change that. You don't have to get a new car to change that. Right where you are. Come on, say from the inside out. I can raise the temperature. Come on, say my life is measured in degrees. Hot, cold, or lukewarm. That's how our life is measured by God. He made it simple. What's the doctor say? Let me put a thermometer in your mouth. Let's see what your temperature is. Temperature matters everywhere that we go. And God wants your temperature. Some of us have been 70, 70 degrees for too long. Come on, say, that's average. I don't want to be average. Come on, I want to break the red bubble. Come on. Come on, you give God a shout in this place. Come on, come on. Come on, come on, come on. Woo! Somebody better get a little bit happy. You know, let God move through you, and who gives a holy hoot about the rest of the people here? I, I can never imagine. I don't know how you go into rapture if your feet never leave the floor. So the Lord says, start having rapture drills everywhere you go. I mean, it's really, really important that you let that the presence run through you. God never moved inside of you to be a prisoner in you. Where's Jesus? I got him right here. Yeah, he said, I'm stuck right here. Who wants to live in you full time? Come on, somebody help me here. He moved in you to move through you. Rivers of water flowing out of you. A city set on a hill that can't be hit. He wants to shine and flow through you. If we can't do it here among the household, how are we going to do it at Starbucks and, and the restaurants and the, and the health spas? How are you going to do when those creepy people are coming after you for the wrong reason? Well, you were creepy one time too, so don't worry about that. <laughs> creepy cultivated. Come on, somebody say amen here. Let's put our hands up all over. Come on, say, Holy Spirit, I'm here tonight to yield to you. I got to go deeper. I got to have more. I got to have more because I know there's more. There's so much I see in the scriptures I haven't seen yet. 
So much I see in people's lives. I don't possess yet. I got to have it. I got to get it. Every time we meet is another miracle moment that I could catch something, get an impartation, a deposit that I never had before. I'm going to wake up this weekend with more than I've ever had in my life. Come on, somebody give God a shout. Come on, give him a shout. Hey! Give somebody a hug and say, I'm very desperate tonight. Come on, tell them I'm very desperate. Wow. You may be seated all over the place. Great to be with you here. I told Pastor Paul when he picked us up at the hotel and I got into his beautiful chariot. He, he drives a chariot, this guy. It's like riding a, an Arabian horse, I'll tell you, the whole way to... And I said, it just feels like we never left. That's so strange. That must mean this must be a home away from home. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Did you enjoy Bruce and Lisa tonight? Don't they do a great job? You know, really, this week, I've never done this many services in a row, and I don't know. It seems like in my other life that I did that. <laughs> and when Pastor Paul brought it up, I thought, hmm, haven't done that for quite a while. And we've been seeing so much movement within the church within believers and even with unbelievers, with the Baptists, with the Methodists. There's one place in Pittsburgh, all the nuns come, line up the nuns. So we're seeing, there's, there's a fresh move of God in the earth. And while some of the believers are waiting whether they think it's still safe to re-enter, there's other people that don't give a hoot about that either. We forget that the revival that's hitting here is going to be not maybe all of the nice people we're used to go to church with. You could be sitting beside somebody tonight that has full-blown cooties. I'm telling you right now. <laughs> you, they look normal, but they got cooties, and they ain't going to tell you. They wear no cootie sign. There's people rushing our borders of our country to get in here. There's people sneaking in by boat, by plane. People trying to break in everywhere. There's movement. There's movement in the earth. The nations are moving. You know, and God's wanting to move his people. You know, in the days of just getting a healing and saying nothing to nobody. The day of getting deliverance, then you're too ashamed to tell people what you're delivered from. So it's a testimony that goes nowhere. I mean, one of the main reasons that God heals you besides he loves you and it's part of his covenant promise is his way to, to blast, to, to scream through you that he's still the same. But there's so many that get healed and because they're healed of a certain condition that they're ashamed of. And I would just say to you tonight, I'm expecting a lot of people to get healed this week. And, and I, I, but I'm expecting you to be able to cut a deal with God that says, you know, you touch me and I'll tell anybody. And in spite of what it may be, in spite of what it may be, because there's people that are ashamed of some of the obvious things you'd be ashamed of, but there's people just don't want anybody to know they had cancer, you know, or that they, or they were dealing with a venereal disease. You know, we had two little kids come up. I called them little. They were young in, in Puerto Rico, and they had syphilis and gonorrhea. And they were sleeping together. They weren't married. They were just living together. And they just, they were just, they were brazen to just tell the whole place. There's a few thousand people there. And I was just like, normal people, normal Pentecostal people would just say, well, I have a need. I need a miracle, all of that. And they just, they just laid it out there. Anytime you bring things into the light... It can't, you, it can't be worked against you ever again. I mean, solve the mystery sometimes. 
inquiring minds are wanting to know. And I mean, so, and so whenever they said that, there was a move among the church people like, oh, wow, look at that. And they said how they had blisters and they were, they were afraid and, and so forth. And she could never have a baby again. The doctors told her you'd never have a baby because you've had syphilis for so long. And they said, but we heard about this meeting. They didn't even go to church. You know, they, they just weren't trained to be ashamed. There's, there's people coming in from those nightclubs and those bars. There's dancers coming into these services, and they don't give a hoot about what anybody thinks. They're takers. Come on, say, they're takers. And if you don't get awake and start taking what God has for you, some of these people that don't even have a membership, don't even know what church is, they're going to walk right through those doors. They're going to cut right in front of you, and they're going to grab the healing that was meant for you. Come on, say, not on my watch. Come on. Say it again, not on my watch. We've got to be possessors, not just confessors. We've got to really make the most of this. And he wants to heal blood pressure. He wants to heal things that we don't even think matter. It's really, really important. Tonight, if you're dealing with high blood pressure, if you're dealing with some level of glaucoma or depression, you know, or there's those suicidal thoughts that run through your head, those are things worthy to be ashamed of. If you're dressing up like the opposite sex at night and nobody knows about it, you know, and you're, you're hidden and you're living two lives, you can be delivered. It's not, a, it's, you know, I mean, it's, it's important to God, but it's not like over the top a big deal. He said, with the finger of God, I cast out devils. I don't scream at them. I don't beg them to leave. I just say, hey, I'm God. You're not. Goodbye. And they go. Come on, say, hey, I'm God. You're not. Bye-bye. Mucho, poquito, bye-bye. Come on, somebody give God a shout. Come on. I mean, you got to take life serious, but at the same time, you don't want to take your evil or your bondage or your addiction so serious. And so I said, when the, these church kids said that, they, were, well, they weren't church kids, they were young. And I said, so underneath my breath, I said, Holy Ghost, really give me these two. I want these two. I want this miracle. And I don't know why there's some people and they stand in front of me. I just want it more for them than others. And I know that's wrong. I'm working on that, okay? <laughs> some days Billy Burke is shallow. I'm sorry. Come on. Ha say hallelujah here. And I said, I really, really want this. And, and uh, so I touched them. They went under the power. And, and, of course, the service went on. Nobody thought anything about it. A couple of days later, here they come back into the meeting. We were there for like this here, four or five days. They came in, and they were just bubbling and screaming and, you know, and excited. And, and they said, we went back to the doctors after that because tell them. And he said, no, you tell them. You tell them. We felt something go through us. <clears throat> Identify that. Learn to identify what that is going through you. And then if you don't think it's real, go home and try to do it yourself. <laughs> just go home and go, okay, I don't feel nothing. Come on, I don't feel a thing. Go home and just try that. So many people don't think through, process properly. That precious anointing, that presence, there's nothing like it on the planet. That's why people are coming and will continue to come to this church. You have a leader and his wife right here that just exude presence. Come on, that's, come on, that's amazing. It's amazing. They came back and they said, we went to the doctors. We took our clothes off. That's what they did. They just talked like that. And they said, we took our clothes off. We sat on a cold metal table. He examined us. All of our blisters are gone. We no longer have any venereal disease. No. And... So we went back the next year, and here she is holding the baby. You know, so you got to take the limits off of God. You got to take the limits off of him. Because the people putting the limits on him are right around you. And some of them are your TV anchor, news anchors, and some of them are your, the people that you're listening to. Some of it's the music you could be listening to. Some of it's church people. You know, I mean, the, the devil comes in all sizes and shapes. He's a snake. He's a dragon. He's a lion. He's a fox. He's a fly. 
He changes animals because they all have a different characteristic of being a predator. That's why he changes the animals in the scripture. Herod was a fox. And so it's very, very important that, that you have that, you're sober and you're vigilant about who's around you and why are they in your life. God plants wheat and the devil plants tares. How horrible it is we come in here and get wheat and seeds of righteousness and encouraged and we're getting into faith and there's people out there that just can't wait to steal that seed. There's people that like you more sick than healed. I mean, there's people that like you more, more sad than happy. You know, whenever you're happy, then they, because they're not happy, so they like your company being not happy. They don't tell you that. And some of them are church people. You got to really, it's not what you say today. It's what you say with conviction. Do you still have conviction with the songs you sing? You had it, but you still have conviction. You still feel the same way about those words of those worship courses. Or have you just learned to sing songs and you sing them religiously? Saul was a worshiper. He liked worship. No, he didn't worship. He liked listening to worship. But he never got delivered. He used music to soothe himself. Those demons would start going on him. He'd say, come on, David, play. Just play, just play. And then those demons, they don't like, they don't like the worship music. But they, they, didn't have, they didn't have someone like Saul saying, get out of here. Yeah. See, Saul didn't want to change, but he liked Christian music. Well, somebody better help me here tonight. He didn't want to get delivered of pipe smoking or vaping. He didn't want to get delivered of that. He didn't want to get delivered of pornography. I was in a Catherine Kuhlman meeting, and a man right out of the wheelchair, couldn't walk, was paralyzed. And he walked right down the aisle, the place was going crazy. She said, you'll be back in that chair in a couple of days because you delight in your sin. So the gifts of the Spirit got him out, but there was nothing in him to keep it. Say this with me. It's not what I get in life that counts. It's what I keep. It's not the money that I had. I hear all the, oh, I used to have millions. What do you have now? Oh. It's not everything that you were. It's who are you? We live in the N-O-W, the now moment. Everything is like N-O-W. The things that we used to talk about futuristic, they're here. Come on, say, someday is now. Say, someday is here. It's incredible. And the wow factor of the WOW, the, the thing that makes us all really, really excited, technology has stole it. There's people more excited about what their iPhone can do than the miracle they saw on Sunday morning. They'll stand in line in freezing weather to get the new camera on the new phone. Come on, somebody help me here. They'll have a frozen mustache by the time they get into the building. But if you ask them to wait at that altar, if, oh, if it's 10 o'clock or 1030, then I get an email or the Brady's get an email, email and why did this meeting go so long? I was waiting in line and he walked right by me, didn't even look at me. It's amazing. And then we say, wow, with the phone. But when we see a miracle, we go, oh, I hope that's happening. Man, we got to get the wow factor back in the church. Somebody say, Wow. And then when you tell it, act like you believe it. I mean, we don't know to what extent anybody really is in recovery. We don't really know how many demons came out of a certain person. One lady came back. She said, I think there's one more in me, Pastor Billy. <laughs> she said, this is true. I don't know what it is. It, it's sad but true. She said, I think there's one more. I said, ma'am, I said, I think we got them all out the other night. She said, no, there's one more in there, and he's the big one. 
I said, the only buddy that lives in you is you. You're in there, and I believe Jesus is in there, so let's just leave it at that. She said, no, I want you to get this big one out. I said, if I get him out, you'll die. You want to die right here? She said, no, why do you say that? I said, because there's nobody in there but you. So if I cast you out, you're dead. She said, do you mean that? I said, yeah, I mean, she's God telling me. I said, yeah, God's telling me that. I said, come on, let's grow. Let's get in this book of miracles. Not magic, but miracles. Not magic, but miracles. Let's get into the book. Let's let that living water run through us. Let's not be a soul who liked listening to it. Let's be like Paul and Silas who sang it in a dark place. Come on, somebody give God a shout here tonight. I don't think as beaten as they were. I mean, they laid many stripes on them. They, weren't, they were not in good shape. And they were in the underground prison. They weren't above. They were underground in the inner prison. When the Bible says inner prison, it means way under the earth. No ventilation, no light at all. And they praised. I'm sure they didn't feel like it. And Jesus never had a praise team. He never had a trumpeter play. He never had drums. We're blessed to have all of this today. He didn't have that. He made his own music. He created his own atmosphere by the words that he spoke. He met them. Well, when you're singing tonight and all this week, I'm expecting Monday and Tuesday and Wednesday, and I'm expecting something. There's going to be some people catch fire here. I don't tell you that. And it's hard to get a habit overnight. It can be done, but it's very difficult. But if you'll commit this week to getting some new holy habits, something could radically shift in your life. Everything you're dreaming for, everything you want, but you've got to applicate. You're going to come at some point in time and say, I'm getting too many birthdays. I'm getting too many. I'm, I'm too far down the track. I've got to do something. You've got to quit. You kind of waiting for something else to happen. This is your week. Come on, say, this is my week. To find discovery. To be redefined. And reassigned to what God has for me to do. How many believe that tonight? Come on, how many believe that? Amazing. Amazing. Look at your neighbor right now and say, just stay out of my space tonight. Come on, tell him right now. <laughs> Mark chapter 10, just one verse I want to deal with. It says, and when he, Bartimaeus, heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he, be he began to cry out. Then he said, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. If it's one thing that you don't have to tell Billy Burke, or I'm sure Pastor Paul, is that we need to talk better and think better. We, we need to craft our words better. Amen. This is my 45th year traveling the world with this ministry. It's, a, it's amazing. I'm just grateful. Come on, give God a big shot. I'm grateful. <laughs> grateful. Um, and just about the time you think you've entered your refining years, you find out there's more refining to do. And you find out the old man doesn't die easy. And you find out that, boy, no matter how hard you try, because we're, we're here to work out our own salvation. Not works of the law, but the works of faith. They're different. The works of the law, you're trying to earn it. The works of faith is I need to meditate, speak to the mountains. I need to do everything that my faith that I'm learning in my new life that makes the kingdom work for me. So the works of the, so people say this is the performance-based gospel. Well, that's kind of what Jesus did. I'm sorry. He did perform. Find me a chapter that he didn't perform. He turned the water into... 
Well, he didn't even say it right. That's all right. By Wednesday, you'll be saying it a lot better. He turned the water into? Water. That's performance. Now, he wasn't doing it to say, hey, look at me. He was doing it to say, hey, look at Father God. You know, we attract so we can deflect. And we, we can't kid ourselves and think that people don't see us. But there's a spirit that either says he's trying to draw attention to himself or he's trying to deflect that. And that's who we are. We're attractors and we're deflectors. But the, the, this thing, in, in all of these years, you do everything you can. I've been in so many auditoriums and high schools and churches. And, and every time I get ready to do, even here, I realize, oh, Lord, I, I've had a rough week. Oh, I've thought some things. I, I barked at some people. I didn't talk at them. I barked at them. You know? And a couple of people really made me mad. And some of them worked for me. And... You know, and I mean, you, you, just, you just think things. And then did you ever think something and say, oh, Jesus, where'd that come from? You know, it has to be the devil. It couldn't be me. And then the Holy Ghost says, ah, that's you. That's still you. There's residue of the old you still there. And it gets so frustrating. So then we adopt and we learn that we live by grace. We're saved by grace, and grace keeps us. But somewhere there's a razor-thin line, a razor-thin line that we still have to be participants in our own recovery. We've got to get engaged with the Holy Spirit. Jesus isn't here but by the Holy Spirit. He left, he handed us over. I'm going, I'm going to give you another. So he handed us over to this Holy Spirit who has every detail of your life. The details of your life are not in the Bible. Who to marry, where to live, what to drive, how many cars you should have. Should you buy a Jeep? Should you have a Lexus? God forbid, should you have a private aircraft? Come on, somebody help me here. <laughs> right? All of those details. Who you should marry, where you should live, how much you should give in the offering. All of those details. How many suits should you have? Billy Burke, how many suits do you need? <laughs> Ladies, how many high heels do you have in that closet? <laughs> and flat shoes. What's your combination of shoes? You could, cl you could shoe all of India with your <laughs> closet. Those details are in the Holy Spirit between you and him. There's nobody that loves you more. There's nobody that wants to present you more faultless before Almighty God. There's nobody that wants to he get you healed more. He lives in you. He's tired of hearing you complain. He's tired of smelling Ben Gay every night. Come on, somebody. He, he's tired of the ace bandages. He's tired of all the serving you demand because you don't feel well. The people that have to move easy around you. Because when we don't feel well, we're a little more grouchy than when we feel good. So he's in there trying to help you connect dots. And even when it means you're not comfortable... Even when it means you've got to go get some counseling. You've got to go to a ministry that you don't really care for. Have some pray for you you're not even crazy about. That's not the case here tonight, I know. But <laughs> All of those things. See, God likes to take you where your flesh will scream. When we can't kill him ourselves, he'll take you into places where your flesh is decreased so he can show up and be God. We are way more in the way than the devil ever could hope to be. People, I told people I'd rather cast demons out all night than to counsel somebody. They said, oh, why would you want that? I said, demons, listen. <laughs> Tell them to go, there they go. Tell, go to a dry place, there they go. Tell somebody to change something, they're going to pray about it. Come on, somebody help me here. 
<laughs> See, so, so we deal with people that really want help, but listen to me, you want help your way. It's got to be God's will, God's way. It's got to be God's will, God's way. If he calls you publicly, he wants to do something publicly. You know? You know, he, if, he, if he wants to use medicine, then he'll use medicine. If he wants to use surgery, then if you live long enough, he'll use many ways. Nutrition and surgery and forgiveness and, you know, unusual, unconventional ways of getting you well. He'll do all that. Because he, he doesn't want us getting religious with any one thing. He wants that spirit blowing through you. Come on, say, blowing through me. Not some scarecrow stuck on a stick. Come on. With the same straw every day. No, God wants to blow fresh oil through you. He wants you to read different translations. He wants you to pray in tongues someday and some days your own language. You know, some days he may want you to sleep with your Bible. He may want you to anoint yourself with oil. He may want you to take communion every day for seven days. You know, there's a lot of people that, I mean, I deal with a lot of people that have done a lot of different things to find recovery. It's not all down Main Street. All the miracles don't come in the front door. Because God's trying to develop something special in you. He wants you, when you tell your story, even though it's a common cold, it's the way you got healed. It's the way it all happened. Come on, as they say, it's the story behind the story. But there's only so many things that you can do to get ready to get a miracle. And believe me, I've taught on all of them. I have tried. And you run out of you run out of things to tell people to do. And a girl came to me not long ago, and she said, I've done everything you've told us. I have your CDs. I watch Facebook. I've heard all of your points. And da, da, I've done them all, and I just can't get my healing. And I, you know, and I just want people to get well. I would never lie to a person. I'd never make up anything. I, I wouldn't be in business this long. That's right. That's right. And I didn't know what to say to this girl. And I mean, my heart was beating that she was really desperate for an answer. And I said, you know, I said, honey, I said, listen to me. I said, I said, have you asked God for mercy? If you had said, God, be merciful to me. She said, I wouldn't do that. I said, pardon me? She said, I'm a child of God. I don't got to give mercy. I'm a son. I'm a daughter of the most high God. I said, oh. How is it you don't have to get mercy, but I'm a leader, been doing this for a lot of years. I need him desperately. I see miracles all the time, yet I need mercy. So did we get a different Jesus here? What? Do you get a better deal than I did? She said, well, tell me why I need mercy. I said, well, do you talk right? Do you think right? Do you make all the right decisions? Have your little finger slipped over to a wrong page on your computer. And you don't know how that pop-up came. Have you slept with the wrong person? Or are you sleeping with the wrong people? Or maybe you aren't, but you want to. <laughs> well, that answered me right there, that question. We got a response right here on that one. I think we're going to have traction this week. That's what I think. <laughs> we're seeing more miracles because we're talking like this to people instead of making it just a bunch of drama. He really loves you in spite of you. And there's nothing you can do about it. He loves you the way you were. He loves you the way you are. And nothing you've done has stopped you from being on plan A. He doesn't restore you to a lower plan. He restores you to the road, the exit you we shouldn't have got off of, but we did. And he doesn't take you back now to be, you know, something that you never... No, he takes you back to the original plan. 
The prodigal son didn't get the best robe till he failed. Get me the best. Well, no, not the best. The guy's stinking like a pig and bit in the mud pen and da da da. No, get me the best. That's good. Because until you come to an end in you and your goodness and all that you can do for God, you can't have his best. His best is knowing you didn't do much to deserve this. And when you realize that it changes your worship, it changes the way you approach him. It changes the way you present him. See, the, the idea here that this girl, I said, you, did, hey, you ask him for mercy? And she said, no, her teaching, and we all get connected to different teachings. We go to a church, but we listen to so many. And if we're not careful, this mixture is created inside of us that confuses us. We love our pastor, but he doesn't believe that, so I'm going over here because I believe that. And then and the, he don't believe this, so I get on the line for that. And pretty soon, you're a composite of four or five people, which I understand they all have a, a gift to share and an annoying thing to give. But if you can't process that correctly, let me make it in natural terms. If your carbs and protein aren't balanced, Come on, somebody help me here. We're so careful about sugar, and we're so careful about this, and, and yet our spirit is just taking in just about anything we want, and it's not coming out properly. Okay, our pastor don't believe in angels. You can't just don't mention angels. Brother, don't mention angels. Don't, don't get into angel stuff. You don't, I said, but they're in the Bible. You don't like angels? You don't like angels? One guy that picked me up at the airport, by the time he told me what his pastor didn't believe, and I said, take me back to the airport. <laughs> I have nothing to say. He just destroyed everything that I could think of that would help your people. <laughs> Here's what I want to tell you tonight, Okay. Mercy is long before you get your words right and your thoughts right and your life right. You're going to need help in the meantime. So our God is not the kind of God that says, okay, whenever you're talking right and thinking right, you know, whenever you're doing everything right, come and see me. We'll get healed. Don't work like that. It don't work like that. When I read my Bible, miracles flourish in unfavorable conditions. I just say it. I believe it helped my unbelief. How's, how's he get a miracle with that confession? <laughs> Come on, say, I believe, I believe, but I got some unbelief, I got some unbelief. but I really want delivered, I really delivered. But, I believe, but I believe, but I got some unbelief. Got some unbelief. What happened? He got delivered. Why are you so fearful? They were full of fear. Oh, you have little, but they got delivered. The Bible's full of places where people were far from where they would like to be. God will heal you on credit. How many here understand credit? Let me see. Uh, how many have a good credit report? Let me see. Not as many. Okay, I get it. See, with God, everything's about motion. Are you headed in the right direction? God loves the pursuit that you have. David was a man after God's heart, but he didn't have it. He never had it, but he was after it. He was a man after. And the whole time when I was growing up and preaching as a young preacher, I'd think, man, David was a man after God's heart, and I preached like he had it. Because he was a worshiper. But he didn't have it. But he was after it. So your pursuit is what God will reward you with. And he rewards you with presence. Don't take lightly your efforts to get out to church. Don't take lightly your efforts to get into a Bible study. Or to watch TV. 
Christian church on TV. Don't, don't, don't take lightly all that. You may not be right now at the place where we're trying to get people, and that is meditating day and night and confessing and speaking and singing 24-7 and, you know, and fasting. And, that's, and yeah, we want that. We want full time for everybody. But maybe right now you're just headed that way. Maybe you're 300 miles to fasting. Come on, somebody. Science says 300 miles to fasting. But you're on the right road. You're 1,000 miles from right confession. Come on, somebody say amen. You're a million miles from forgiving everybody. Come on, say amen. But you're headed in the right direction. You want it. God help me. I know I need to. Now you're getting into conversations with Holy Ghost. Give me strength. Help me. I don't know if people do that. I think it's admirable to try and conquer everything you can on your own. I do. We tell people to do that. But we run in, I run into things so much in these days that, Lord, I can't do that. I can't give those people what they want, but oh, I know you can. And, and, and he loves that because he's recognizing that gifting only goes so far. Saul was anointed out of the bowl. David was anointed out of the horn. We don't need any more bowl anointings. We can just work it up and, and have this. Non we, people need real miracles. And the people that need real miracles may not even be someone that knows the Bible that much or, or is forgiving people. Maybe they're swearing all day long. They're talking about Jesus, but not the right way. <laughs> but they need help. There, years ago, I don't know how long or many years ago it was, I was at Eagle Mountain Church, EMIC, with, with Pastor George. I know you love Pastor George here. He's a great guy. Yeah, we, we had a great miracle service at that church. And a lady came into that meeting. She was Spanish and uh, had broken English. And when I went to touch her, she said, please don't touch me. She said, I am in such pain. She said, I fell out of a building, nine stories, I believe it was, nine stories. And she said, the man that fell in front of me, his body was cut in half. He died. I landed on top of him. And she said, ever since I did, I landed on these pylons, these metal bars. And she said, I, I, I can't get nothing to take this pain. Morphine, nothing takes this pain out of my body. And she said, I, and I was invited here. I don't go to this church. But she said, I was invited to this miracle service. And she said, I just, I don't know what you know, but if you know anything that can help me, I, I want it. And I said, well, I, I know the Holy Ghost. I know the healer. She said, well, give me that. Just give me whatever you have. So I, I touched her real, on the cheeks, real softly on the cheeks, and she just kind of went like this. And she said, oh, she said, please don't touch me again. I ask you not to touch me. I said, I didn't mean to. She said, that hurts so much. I said, oh, wow. I said, okay, I'm not going to touch you. I'm not going to touch you. So I stood right in front of her, and I said, Holy Spirit, touch this lady. Well, she, she started to shake a little bit. And, and as she was falling back, I could see on her face the pain was still there, the whole way to the floor. Say that, the whole way to the floor. So she's laying on the floor, and she's, I could just see down there that she was there, that she was touched, genuinely touched, but the pain hadn't left. And I said, okay, Lord, let's touch her, go through her, because that's all Billy Burke can do is trust. I believe what I know. I trust what I don't know. Come on, say, what I know, I believe. What I don't know, I trust. So I don't know, and there's a lot of people here left to pray for that I have to be busy praying for. So I left her in the care. I have to trust. I can't get in every situation the way I'd like to. 
So I walked away from her, and I got busy with, you know, a lot of the other people, and time left, and pretty soon it was 11 o'clock or so, and we shut the meeting down, and I thought, oh, that lady, oh, gosh, I never got back to that lady. Lord, I'm, I'm trusting you. See, there, I'm trusting you to touch her. See, you leave the anointing, but the anointing never leaves you. The moment you open that request up, come on, say, all of heaven, all of heaven. truly declares, truly declares. I'm going to heal you. Heal. Come on, somebody give God a shout here tonight. Come on. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So, so I, I just, I kind of felt like, I, okay, Lord, I wanted to make that. And you can't do that for everybody. That one stood out to me because of the excruciating, her story, yep. falling that far, landing on a dead man. He was cut right in half. And then all that, that story stuck out to me. So, you know, a day goes by, two days goes by, and all of a sudden we're having testimonies, I think, on the third night. And I look in the testimony line, and here's that lady. I then wonder what that lady's doing in, you know. And the Holy Ghost says, yes, Mr. Believer, servant of the Most High God. <laughs> I said, well, I can't wait to hear what happened to her. So she come up, and here's what she said, and it's why I tie this in to mercy tonight. She come up, and she said, before you say anything, I said, she said, I am so healed, I don't know what to do. No, I said, I said by that you mean, she says, I have no pain. She said, after you touched me, I, she said, I, and I fell to the floor. And the, she said, I was still hurting, but I had never had that kind of an experience before. And frankly, I was afraid for that to happen. I see it on television, but I'm not so sure that that's for me. And she said, evidently, she said, I went down to the floor, and I thought, how did I get here? <laughs> and she said, so I said, well, tell me, tell me. And everybody's listening. The cameras are rolling. This is being taped. And she said, I just can't thank you enough. She said, because I really wasn't into this, you know, and, and then people like to tell me, and I never heard of you. Billy Burke, I never heard of you. <laughs> Why do people like to tell me that? I don't know. And I listened, and I just smiled, and, and, and then she started to cry. And I said, what are you crying for? And she said, I just, I'm just, I said, what's the matter? She said, I don't have any money to give you. Then I started crying. Come on, somebody. Then <laughs> We both were crying. She said, I have no money to give you. I said, hey, 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 it's not about that. She said, it is. Where we come from, when somebody helps you, like you helped me, she said, we, we give money. We give whatever we have. But she said, we have nothing. My husband and I, we have nothing. I said, you know what you do for me tonight? You go back to my product table. You take everything. You take one of everything. It's on the house. And she says, what kind of a man are you? I said, I'm, I'm a saved man. I'm a, you know, nobody ever asked me that in a service. <laughs> and, and I said, just go back. Come on, hurry and go back and, and take one. And she said, I get healed of something no one could help me with. I come here and I tell you, and I don't have any money. And then you tell me to do that. I said, lady, would you just hurry up? Well, the place is all clapping. And, and she goes back. Well, back there she meets her landlord. He says, you don't have to pay any more rent. Back, wait a minute. Then she stayed there a little longer and she meets her physician. He said, you don't owe me any more money. Now, watch this. So we're in the green room and she comes back in the green room. I think Pastor George or somebody gave her a new Bible. And, and she came back and she looked at me and she had this crazy look on her face and she said, what kind of church is this? <laughs> I said, why would you ask me that? She said, because I met at the table and met the doctor and I met the landlord and then this pastor, I don't even know him, don't even, and look at the new, the, the value she put on a free Bible. And she said, what kind of a church is this? I said, it's a church that grows up. When a church grows up, this is how it behaves. Yeah. Come on, give God a big shout, come on.
But she said to me, she said, could I ask you a question? I said, sure. And we're in the green room. She says, when I fell to the floor, I was feeling something. And, and I've never felt that. What was that? I said, it wasn't a that. It was a him. She said, who was him? I said, it's the Holy Spirit. She said, you mean the Holy Spirit we talked to? Yeah, that was him in me. Yeah, he's, in, he's still in you. That's who healed you. Because of the cross, but it was him in you. Come on, say, because of Jesus. Because of Jesus. But he carried out the healing. He out the healing. And that's who that was. And she said, oh, my. She said, I'm feeling him right now. I said, well, you probably will, you know. And I, my, my point to you tonight is here's a lady here who wasn't well-versed, didn't know all the songs, was a visitor, had nowhere to go, no money, and God moved. And God moved. He knows right where we all are. He knows the effort. The prodigal was walking back to the father's house. The father's running to him. See, it's that motion. I'm going in. I'm headed in the right direction. I mean, if you leave here and you're into some very, very dark stuff, you're not headed in the right direction. If you leave here and you're with some people that are really risque and compromising, then you're not in the right direction. You know, if you're here just to see maybe what you can get and go, then you're just, you're not headed right. It's that surrender to get moving in another direction. There's a direction God offers. He never shows any of us the full picture. He don't trust you and I that much. We would reveal it and the devil would know everything right away. Come on, say amen. <laughs> say he orders my steps. He trusts you with one step. <laughs> then another step. And every time you trust and obey, trust and obey, then he begins to lay out a little more real estate for you. But you're nowhere really where you're about to be. Amen. You've been reserved for these end time move of God. Come on, somebody give God a shout. You better give him a better shout than that. But there's a line somewhere out there. I don't know where it is. Only the Spirit and Holy Spirit can show you and show me. But there's a line out there somewhere where we're trying to earn healing. There's a line out there somewhere where we're memorizing and memorizing and memorizing. And mem there's principles of God. There's the pr person of God. You can't get everything just by principles. Practice the principles, but worship the person. Come on, say practice the principles. You can practice principles your whole life and never know him. Zechariah, I mean, Saul never really, and Saul had no presence about him. Zechariah in the temple worked with the incense, had no presence. Thomas was a disciple for three years. And he's known for his doubt, not for his presence. What comes from you? What comes from me? Not in the meetings, not here. And when I'm sitting on a plane, what's the, vi the vibrations? You know the song, Good Vibrations. What, what vibrations. what vibrations come from you? What are people, what signals are people picking up? See, that can change. You can attract sickness. You can attract lust. You can attract all the wrong people. I had a girl now that works for one of the famous news anchors. She's really up there. And I knew her when she wasn't up there. And she came to me and she said, do you think I'm ugly, Billy? I said, do I think you're ugly? What kind of question is that? She said, do you think I'm unattractive? I said, no, but not by any means. She said, well, how come I attract all the wrong people? How come I attract all the wrong people? I said, that's your inside. That's not your outside. You attract who you are in here. 
Success begins in here. Presence begins in here. And you can begin to attract the anointing at a level. You'll be like Ezekiel who said, get this anointing off me. It's too much. If you want that. You know, you come to these meetings, there's only so much that I'm called to do, and then when you don't do your part, that it makes me look bad. I was at a Billy Burke meeting, and I went up there, and I was healed just for one day. Well, I can't live with you. One lady said, I'm taking you home. I said, I am not going home with you. <laughs> My wife is right over there. She wouldn't like that one bit, you know. And, no, no, I'm taking you home. I'm taking you home. I just need you with my house. I said, no. Oh, she said, I'll pay you. No. <laughs> You're engaging with him. This here is to get a jump start. Yes. You know, the stone that hit the giant didn't kill him. The first stone knocked him down. Yeah. It was the sword that killed him. Uh, yeah. But David couldn't reach that high. So God had to hit the giant and bring him down to David's level. Oh, somebody better help me tonight. And a lot of altar ministry is the devil knocking your giant down to where you can take the rest of it home and beat it. Come on, somebody help me. Come on, somebody help me. But you don't think that. You want the altar to be a cure-all. You don't want any work left. You want one pastor to bake it and his wife to serve it and the evangelist to fry it and all the TV preachers to box it. And, and what do you want to do? You want to play soccer. You want to shop till you drop. You have to sign up for full time. You can't fight a, a full-time devil as a part-time Christian. Yes. He's a relentless pursuer of your oh, destruction. Yes. I prayed for a blind man in, in Connecticut. I think I told this story, but he, he was so blind he couldn't see anything, and his daughter was such a rude daughter. And she brought him, and, you know, and I, I, I brought, she brought him on a Sunday morning, and when I touched him, my faith came back to me. And that means there was nothing there where faith was operating. Faith is meant to be operational. Yes. It's supposed to be in motion every day. And he, and I prayed for him the second time. My faith came back to me the second time. And she was just barking at me. And, you know, I thought you were this. I thought you were that. And I said, ma'am, I said, there's, there's an anointing here for your dad. I feel it leaving me, but I need you to help me, help you. How, how can you, how can I help you? I said to, him, to the dad, I said, I want you to go home today and all afternoon just sit in a chair and use your imagination. You can't see. Blind Bartimaeus couldn't see, but he could hear. He got healed on hearing, not on seeing. If your mind can think about lust, if your mind can see people with clothes and see them naked, if your mind can see just about anything you want your mind to see, it's a weapon. It's a weapon. That's why the devil's into pornography so much. Because he has your mind going this way. You're in church, but you're cultivating darkness. So you have darkness. You have as you think, as you think you are. This is the weapon. Come on, put your hands up here. Say that. This is the weapon. And I was trying to weaponize his mind in another way. I wasn't trying to offend him. I don't like handing out homework. I like going in, everybody on the floor, boom, 8 o'clock, 8.30, we're at home. <laughs> Not so good for the people that are here that felt the anointing. We don't know what to do, and there's no challenging for them to change. Challenge nothing, change nothing. 
You don't challenge it, it'll never change. That's exactly you don't push the boundaries, nothing will happen. She said, oh, I come here to get my dad healed and you're sending him home to do all this. Don't you see he's blind? I'm asking your dad to think all day in a chair, seeing your grandchildren, seeing yourself having a good rest of your life. I gave him three or four things to, to imagine because we all use our imagination. That's why Ephesians 3.20 says, beyond what you can even ask or Imagine. How many can imagine a whole lot? So he, they come the next morning, and I walked out on the stage. They didn't even introduce me, and he's up there at the altar. His daughter drags him up and says, here he is. He's been thinking all day long, and he's ready for you. And he's, he's a big guy, and he said, I'm ready for you, Brother Billy. I mean, just put those hands on me. I'm ready for you. So I touched him. He went under the power, and he was a big guy. And he picked him up, and he said, oh, my God, I can see. And he just, the, the place went, no, wait a minute. The place went absolutely bonkers. They were just like shouting and screaming, and, and he's happy. And then all of a sudden, he got kind of like, oh. I said, what's the matter? He said, it's all black and white. There's no color. He said, come on, touch me again. Give me color. I said, whoa, 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 whoa. I said, I don't have any color in me. I don't think I do. I said, you were blind. You can see, right? He said, yeah, but I want color. Now, this guy's getting upset and his daughter too because he didn't get color. He was blind. Oh, I don't know if you even hear what I'm saying to you. I said, son, I said, sir, I said, so I said, uh, there was a, a flower arrangement. I said, that flower arrangement, I said, tell me what you see. I see it, black and white. I want to see the colors of those flowers. He was like a, de a man demanding a return <laughs> on a miracle gone awry. I said, you're looking at a Christian gone wild here in a minute, I'll tell you that, you know. <laughs> He, and his daughter, they didn't get it. They didn't get it when they left. He left seeing. You know what I told him? What I would say to you tonight. Hey, get busy believing for the color. Yes. Get involved. The heavy lifting has been done. Now go finish it. God will either get you involved with filling the water pots with water or picking up the baskets left over. But it'll get you involved. Yes. He's got to get you engaged with your own recovery. What does Isaiah say, 43? Put me in remembrance of what I did for you at Calvary. Put me in remembrance. Act like you know me. Put a demand on the anointing. Let me hear my name coming out of your mouth all day long. Oh, come on, somebody. Give him a big shout. Come on, all over the place. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on, give him praise in this place. See, the more you engage with any level of God, the more you'll expect. The reason I pray for so many people who's not expecting anything is because they're not engaged in creating anything. And the more seeds you plant and the more ground you break up and the more you cut, the, then the more you're going to harvest. The more chicken breasts you put on the grill to barbecue, come on, somebody. The more you put on, the more you have to eat. It's just a simple law of increase. And the more you're saying, thank you, Jesus, and the more you're putting your hand on yourself, cultivating, the more you're eating a piece of bread and saying, man, this is the body, I take it. That's it, that's it. The more you say, I forgive fuzzy, flippy, and froggy. Come on, somebody. <laughs> yeah. The more you do anything that maybe, and the more, the more reward you get is the fact, the more uncomfortable you are. 
so many people, they, they, they just think they're beyond being asked to dunk in a river. Or they're beyond certain courses of action. You don't want it bad enough. You're looking for a reason to complain because you didn't get it. You want an excuse not to believe. You are in an inner tube floating down Lazy River, <laughs> headed for the rapture. Come on, somebody help me here tonight. <laughs> Do you know that every time you raise your hand to praise him and every time that you move in the direction of getting engaged with activating a promise that you're honoring everything that Jesus suffered for? Oh. Every time you say, by your stripes, it may not mean nothing to you. It's become a religious phrase to you, but it sends shockwaves through the hallways of hell. Come on, somebody. Come on. Come on, somebody help me. Every, every time you say, I thank you for the blood, you're used to it. You're, but those cancer cells begin to break up. They begin, tumors begin to get disconnected. Somebody help me here tonight. We got to get out of everything that we're so used to that's become, you know, things that you're used to become invisible. They become religious. David said in Psalm 92, verse 10, anoint me with fresh oil. I'd love you to get some of that this week. Just to revisit maybe some of the things you used to do that you don't do. This, this millennial church isn't just for spectators. It may look like a theater that you come in and just relax. Maybe these seats are too comfortable, Paul. I don't know. Maybe, maybe these people are expecting popcorn. I don't know here. But God brought you here. He gathered you into this church Amen. under this leadership to make a very unique statement in the city of Tulsa. Oral released healing to the world. Kennedy Hagen released faith to the world. But Paul Brady is releasing worship to the world. And I say that with signs and wonders and miracles. Come on, you better give him praise. Somebody better shout to God here today. Come on, somebody better shout to God today. What I'd like you to do tonight, and we're going to be here all week in the morning, tomorrow morning. How many's coming tomorrow morning? Uh huh. How many's coming tomorrow night and Wednesday morning? And by the time we're done here, I mean, you'll be too tired to sin. I'll tell you that right now. <laughs> There's some truth to that. <laughs> this really put a target on your condition. If you don't like the presence of a hospital where today it's a dangerous place to be, it's one of the most dangerous places to be today, the womb of a woman in a hospital. Who thought it? Who would think that? If you don't like the presence of a jail, or the presence of a drug rehab, if you're tired of the chiropractor and all the presence around that, there's a presence there. The alternative is there's another presence that you can not just have, but you can cultivate. One guy said to me, he said, Brother Billy, he said, I think I'm going to try singing the same songs you do. And, 
in your miracle services, they kind of move me. They kind of move them. They kind of move them. I want to smack them and then ask for forgiveness. Come on, somebody, you know. I said, what do you mean? He said, I get so moved them with you, but I, I sing these songs. He said, do you think it'd be okay if I sing the songs you sing? I said, I don't own them. Freely I re give, receive, and freely I give. They, Go ahead. Let me know how it works for you. So I saw him a couple weeks ago. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, my God. Why didn't I see this earlier? Oh, the Lord. He's in every room. Oh, he's everywhere. He's all in my bathroom and my dining room. And my. I'm thinking, dear Jesus, what songs did you sing? Maybe I better sing some of your songs. <laughs> You, every one of you, have the power to activate this presence. Come on, every single one of you. I pity not a one of you. I love you. But you have the power. And that's why the world is so into bringing back the 60s and the 70s and the 80s and soft rock and easy listening. That's why this, it is rampant. That's why there's movies online and movies on demand. And I mean, you're get, checking out of a drugstore and there's movies. And getting your head anywhere but where your mind can think like God. Where you can attract something that will break the curse in you and everybody in your family line. Yes. But you got to really mean it. I can say this tonight because I, I couldn't say it until recently, about three weeks ago. I had to wait two years before I would be released to say this. But it was a little over two years ago, we were having a meeting in Sarasota, Florida. And a guy came up, pretty muscular guy, well-toned, rough-looking guy. A guy you want on your security team. <laughs> he said, I, uh, I'm under a family curse. He said, I have thoughts, bad thoughts of suicide, murder. I can't get away from it. He's from Charles Manson's grandson. Charles Manson Sr. was my dad. And, and he was, and my dad, my, my grandfather was Charles Manson, the, the Charles Manson that we kind of know. I didn't blink. Why would I blink? But I could see he was struggling. He said, do you think you can help me? I said, do I think? I said, I don't, I don't even give that any thought. If I'm not ready when I come out here to deal with that, I'm, I shouldn't be out here. He said, well, how are you going to do it? I said, I'm just going to do it. I said, are you ready for it? He said, what are you going to do? I said, <laughs> I said, put your hands up. He said, well, that makes me pretty vulnerable. Said, That's the idea. So he put his hands up, and I, and I knew this was a real Kairos moment. I said, Holy Ghost, we want to break this curse. And I said, the pain of this family and of this grandson who was really being pulled to follow in those footsteps. I said, God, help him. He doesn't want to be like that. Sometimes that's all you have to say. I don't want to be like this. Oh, Lord, I don't want to go down this trail. I see me and I see me and I see my father. I'm the same. And what I didn't like about him, I see it in me. It's so easy to see it in others. Hard to see it in yourself. I said, Holy Ghost, touch him. Boom. He goes down. Makes a lot of noise down there. <laughs> Scared the whole place, I'll tell you that. 
And I said, hey, you're covered. You're born again here tonight. You're covered. Don't worry about it. You're sealed. You're sealed by the Spirit. You're okay. Well, when he came up, you know, I waited about a week, and then he called our office. He said, I'm coming up to see you. And I said, I'd, I'd be happy to see you. I said, do you mind if we film your story? He said, not at all. Nice guy. No, nice guy. But he came, and he brought an urn with him, a big urn. He said, these are the ashes of my grandfather. No, I didn't tell him to bring that. <laughs> That wasn't just anybody in that urn. That's right. yeah. That was a name you all know. Yeah. A name who was a killer. Yeah. Who really... But he had his reasons, I'm sure. Not to do what he did. No excuse for that. But that's how broken people are. Ted Bundy told Dr. Dobson, if you knew how many of me are out there, you wouldn't go to bed tonight. He told Dr. Dobson that. And Dr. Dobson said, when he told me that, I was just like a reality check. So he sets this urn of Charles Manson's ashes on the, my desk, my holy table here. <laughs> and you're tested right in that moment. Is greater is me that's in me or is greater that's he? Sometimes you're saying greater is he, but you think it's you. And, those, the, those, the, and my secretaries are going, ah. I'm thinking, hey, do who you work for here? Do you know who you work for here? And they all lined up in a chair and wanted to hear this story. He filmed it, and then he said, that's your film. And, I said, and the Lord put a check on it. He said, he said, don't show this to anybody. Keep it private for two years. I don't want anything to, this to get out to anybody. I called Pastor George. I called George Pearson. I shared it with George because it was just kind of, I thought, something I didn't want swimming around in my head. And he said, you got to be careful with that stuff. So we contacted our attorneys and stuff like that and just... Everybody said, keep it under. Just, you have it. It's there. Keep it. A couple of weeks ago, we're in another meeting in Sarasota. Who walks in the door? There he is. A broken man. I come back to thank you. My wife and I are involved in ministry. We've started this program. We're doing this. And we're doing that. Come on, somebody give God a shout. You better do a little better than that. He said, when I came up to you, it's been a couple years, I think. I said, yeah. He said, when I came up to you, he said, I really didn't have good intentions. I said, thank you, Jesus. <laughs> Bless him, Holy Father, you know. <laughs> he said, but you know, when you touched me, what went through me? You know, we don't live for that. We know that. But we want all righteousness to be fulfilled. You know, Jesus was being baptized by the Baptist, and the Baptist didn't want to baptize him. He said, you should be baptizing me. What did Jesus say? Uh-uh. That all righteousness might be fulfilled. Meaning everything the Father wants me to experience, I must experience that. And I must experience going under the mighty water. I must experience everything and every other follower will do. I must know what it's like to be submerged under the water. He wants you to have every experience, not whether it's right or wrong, whether you need it or don't need it. Everything. I'm going to say everything. everything. That's why Peter said when they crucified him, crucify me upside down. He said, I've experienced everything that he's done, but I'm going to get one on him before I get out of here. Crucify me upside down. 
God has so many things for you to experience here at every age. Some of you better stop thinking your best years are behind you. You better stop it. You're going to mess up God's plan. Some of the annoying things, some of the gifting, some of the assignments are just for you. Well, it's, it's time for the younger people. No, no. Abraham was a hundred, still had babies. Come on, somebody help me here. I'm not asking you to do that. <laughs> but I'm asking, I'm asking you to really reconsider retiring in the faith and just sitting in here and becoming a spectator. Yeah. Yeah. Tulsa is being prepared for an awakening like they have never, ever, come on, ever, 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 ever had. And he brought you the couple right here to get it done. And that means there's going to be some zigging and some zagging. It's going to mean, well, we never did this before. And it's going to mean, well, you know, so-and-so didn't do it like that. And, you know, and Oral would be happy. Kenneth E. Hagen would be happy. They were all about what? They were all about kingdom. Yes. And you got a man here and his wife that are about the kingdom. Yes. Come on, give them, give them a big, big God bless you. Come on. Come on, somebody. So after this, after we had that service and he came up and he said all the, the good that he's doing and some of my staff was there in this meeting that was there that day. And I thought just, if it was just for them yeah. yes. to watch that transformation because he was different. He wasn't the same guy that was in my office with, with the urn. He wasn't the same guy. He talked about what him and his wife were doing and how they were helping people. And he said, I'm so grateful that curse was broken over me. And I thought, I, I, you know, I thought, boy, if we could just get more people that wouldn't care so much about what people think, that would really cut loose people bragged about their drinking and bragged about how many women they slept with some of these ball players I slept with a thousand I slept with three hundred it hits the tabloids it's amazing how the world runs on the complete opposite of what we do that's why we get born again that's why we get a new nature. That's why God heals us. So we look back and think, did I do that? Was I involved in stuff like that? And you're so grateful to be out of it. You say, oh, Lord, forgive me again and again. What's happening is you're getting a deeper cleanse. Because now when you look back, your vision is 2020, And you think how stupid you are. Oh, you didn't say that when you, got, when you got born again. You just said, forgive me, da-da-da-da-da. But the more you learn about the Holy Ghost, yeah. and then you look back at what you were involved in. Yeah, the devil's always reminded me, well, use it to get a deeper cleanse. Yes. Say, Lord, well, what you did, yeah. what Calvary did, Amen. the person I am no longer, I owe it all to you. Come on, give him a mighty, mighty praise. Come on, give him a mighty, mighty. Come on, a mighty, mighty. So, so what I want you to do this week, I'm asking you, it's up to you to do this, but I'm just trying to get us in a better place for this week. I want to see you really get healed of some long-standing stuff. Ask for mercy. 
Bartimaeus, watch this, Bartimaeus did, the ten lepers did, the Syrophoenician woman did. More miracles registered in the Gospels out of mercy than any other virtue. More. Now, at the end of some of these stories, Jesus said, go your way, your faith has made you whole. But faith in what? They didn't have a church. They didn't have a Bible. Faith in what? That guy will show mercy to you. That's the reputation that spread. He embraces the, the good, the bad, and the not so good. He's not afraid of stink and odor, and there's nothing you can do to shock him. One guy in Toronto came up, he said, he came up, he said, Billy Burke, I want to have a baby. I said, praise God. I said, is your wife here? He said, no, 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 I'm single. I said, oh. I said, you know you got to get married. No, no, you don't mean what I mean. I want God to give me the, the organs that I can have a baby. He's serious. We're not in Mayberry anymore. We are not in Mayberry. <laughs> Barney Fife is in heaven. Come on, somebody help me here. He said, he said, I, I believe, he said, you say things are, all things are possible. I said, yeah, yeah. He said, well, then God can create a womb and a uterus. And he went down the line. He knew every organ that I didn't even know. And he said, I'm asking you to, to do that. Well, the cameras are rolling. I'm in front of all these people. And I'm thinking, oh, Lord, I need, a, I need a prayer right out of heaven right here for this. I said, raise your hands. And I'm thinking, oh, help me, Lord. So I, I, I touched him. I said, Holy Ghost, touch this man the whole way through him and give him a revelation like he's never had in his whole life. Yes. And then I, as I walked away, I'm thinking, where are we? Where are we? We are late. We are late into the end times. This whole gender thing. And, the, and if someone is cloned, do they even have a soul? And the implanta implantation of chips. <coughs> oh, where are we? Where are we? What generation is this? All I know is we're still in this now moment where you have a beating heart and a brain that connects you to a holy God. That's good, that's good. You have a book of promises. Don't, load down, don't lay down and just grow old and die without contending for the faith. Contend for everything. We've all lost friends and family over the past few years and it makes me angry that some of the best people that I know have been taken. I wasn't there for them, couldn't be there for them. I don't know what you do. I don't know how, how much time you put into this. Here's what I know before we close. I want to pray for a few people tonight. But here's what I know. Here's what I know. I know that you can be in the same living room, in the same space, Mary and Martha. You can be busy doing what you do because it needs done. And you can be busy kneeling at the feet of the Master. What did Jesus say to Mary? You have chosen the thing that can never be taken from you. Amen. Oh, my God. Amen. What do we all get that gets taken? But the one thing Mary chose. They both were right there. Martha could have caught what Mary had. Martha could have said, oh, my God, I'll do these later. This is the most important thing. Martha could have done that. But Martha, in her core values, never did that. Wasn't willing to break into a new holy habit. Start. 
Start where you are. How do you start tonight? Before you go to bed, just watch this. This is the easiest version that I know. You put your hands up like this. You say, Holy Spirit, I love you. And I need you. Make me more smart than I've ever been. Make me wise. Keep me tonight. Help me serve you better. Amen. And you go to bed. But to go to bed night after night after night and letting the sun go down on yet another day of inconsistency deepens your religious ways. Take a moment. Between the time your hit, feet hit the floor in the morning, before you get to the coffee pot. Come on, say, before the coffee pot. <laughs> Let me give you a demonstration. You get out of bed, you know it's right out there. And if your wife made it right, you just push the button. Come on, somebody help me here. And on your way to the coffee pot, I praise you today. I give you myself today. What can I do to serve you today? I belong to you. Come on, see, I don't belong to circumstance. I don't belong to coincidence. Accidents. Anything else you want to add to that? I belong to the Holy Spirit. I give you my life today. And, and the Holy Ghost, what's going to happen is that he's going to have to get the cloud of witnesses to start catching all the angels. They're going to be so shocked at what you did. <laughs> angels going under the power. Come on, somebody. <laughs> and you watch the grace that will fall your way. You watch the expectancy that will come your way over something that minuscule, something that nano size. He's a mighty God. A little in the hands of the Lord is a lot. Yes. Put your hands up all over the place. Come on. God wants to touch you tonight. He wants to heal you tonight. He wants to begin a virtuous flow inside of your body. He wants to heal autoimmune disease. He wants to heal environmental diseases. He wants to heal the, the COVID leftover, the brain fog. He wants to set you free from the fear that is still rampaging over the earth. He wants you to pack your bags and move into Psalm 91. He wants you to live there. He that dwells. The Hebrew word, he that lives under the shadow of the wings of the Almighty. He will dwell in the secret place, not of a man. We've made that teaching sound like we have a secret place. The Bible says the secret place of the most high. That secret place has something to do with praise, something to do with worship, something to do with Christian music. Come on, say, Holy Spirit, help me tonight. Dwell in the place, that secret place of the most high. Heal me, and I'll be healed. Strengthen me, and I shall be strong. Deliver me, and I will be delivered in Jesus' name. Come on, give God a big, big shout. Come on, give him. Come on, give him a mighty praise. Come on, give him a mighty, 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 mighty shout. Somebody got to do it. Somebody has to praise him. Somebody's got to give God some glory in the house. Somebody's going to say, devil, get out of here. Get behind me. Get out of my face. Your head is coming off. Woo, come on, give him a mighty shout. Give me this lady right here, you with the S on your jersey. Yeah, you. If that's your husband with you, bring him. If that's your boyfriend, leave him. No, if it's your... Go on up here quickly. How you doing tonight? Put your hands... Keep your hands up. I just need you with me tonight, everybody all over the place here. There's a presence on both of you that's absolutely... Oh, that's the power. Get her. The power just fell on her. Look at this. Look at this. The power's just falling down here, people. It's the Holy Ghost on these people. It's, if it comes on you, let it happen. Don't fight that. 
You know, you say, I wasn't raised like that. Well, grow. Add to your repertoire. It create a bigger portfolio. Say, I was healed in the winter and delivered in the summertime. I was healed in the congregation and healed at my home. I was slain at church and I was slain in my bedroom. Take the limits off of God. Sign up today full time. Sign up today. I mean, all the fine print. Say, Master, I trust you. I trust you, dear Jesus. God's expanding your thinking. There's things you have kept him out of where he's trying to expand your sphere of influence. He told Jabez, I'm going to increase your coast. Paul said, enlarge my heart. David said the same thing, enlarge my heart. That's exactly what God's going to do with you and your wife. There's going to be a level of compassion that you haven't had. You care, but compassion is a whole nother level. And it, you're, it's going to be amazing. You're going to find ways to serve people, to help people. It's not going to be you two first. It's going to be people. Jesus, people. Oh, this mighty power. Come on, somebody give them a, give, somebody give them a mighty praise. Come on. Somebody give them a mighty praise. Mighty Jesus. Mighty Jesus. There's a Lyme's disease being healed. Somebody with Lyme's. Where are you? Some kind of a Lyme's disease being wonderfully touched tonight. Quickly, come to me. Don't wait. Hurry, come to me. Hurry. Come. Don't wait a second. Get that woman down here. Get her down here. Holy, holy. Here she comes. Come on, give God a shout. Lyme's disease being wonderful. Come on, sing this with us. Holy, holy. How long have you had this? How long have you had this? I don't, I, I started somewhere between September and October. My. Oh, you're the husband here? Yes. It's just, she, you don't have it, just her. No, just her. Are you being treated? They don't know. They, they don't no, know how to treat it. Doctors don't know mm -hmm. how to do anything. Well, the God does tonight. They're going to be completely gone by the power. Oh. Come on, somebody give them a shout. Somebody. Come on, sing this, holy, holy. Holy, holy. Come on, out of your own lips, holy. I don't know what level, if you should, if you should get slain. I don't know what level that is, but see, she's under deeper than he is. And if you're down there and you're, you're conscious, you can think. You just not maybe all, just enjoy the moment and just say, Jesus, Master, Holy, whatever word you want to use, do everything. I mean, move through me. Touch the part I don't even know tonight. No, if, you, if you're out completely, and that could happen, that could just happen, it does happen, then just don't worry, we'll take care of you. I don't know, we'll, we'll just make sure you're okay. Don't be afraid to be out. They carry people out, out of bars all the time. <laughs> out of these casinos in Vegas, Atlantic City. They carry people out of those casinos all the time. All the time. This is wonderful right here. Do you know these people? You know them? Take my life, what it ought, what it ought to be. To be. Holy Spirit. Move. 
move through me. Come on, everybody, move. Move through me. Let's sing it again, Lisa. Come on, Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. Somebody in line over here. Move through. Holy Spirit. Holy Make my life what it ought and to be. Make my life what it ought to, to be. be. Holy Spirit, move, move through me. Give me this lady right here. I can't see a man right here with the black on. I believe it's red hair. Is it red hair you have? Yeah, yeah, come right there, yeah. Quickly, ma'am, quickly. How are we doing tonight? What are you here for tonight? Well, uh, the Lord's been having me wake up at night uh, to pray. Mm -hmm. um, and so for the last couple of weeks, that's what I've been doing. He told me that's my assignment. Hey, none of that in church. Come on. <laughs> She crawled over on top of him right here. Right in front of God, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. These meetings can happen, more can happen than you know. How would you know, ma'am, something's different? Huh? She got a heavy dose, I'll tell you that right now. She can't get up. <laughs> Enjoy that. No, and leave her go. Leave her go. Why people want to get in here and disturb this, I've never understood that. I, I think going, bouncing like a ball, what's the purpose of that? You fall and bounce right back up. It's almost like you did it for whatever. Let him touch you. How do we get touched by God and not have any differences, changes? She can't get up, I don't think, guys. <laughs> My knee still hurts. Your knee. You got hurt falling under the power. Yeah, right? God is so good. Yeah. I'm so grateful. Yeah. It's been a long time. This will not be, this will suffering. not be. The pain with the limes and the, the complex. Check it. There's nothing there. There's nothing there. My hands back. Somebody better give God a shout. Somebody better give God a shout. What? You couldn't do that without pain. Is that true? Yes, it's true. It, there's a tiny bit of pain, but I mean, look what I mean. This is wonderful. Lime's this is the first time I've been able to do Lime's this. freezes your whole body. Yes, it did. It's all muscle restriction. Look at you. Yeah. What? What? I'm so excited. I'm so excited. I'm free. I'm free. Amazing. Now, here's the deal. Here's the deal. Don't sit down. Here's the deal. She could live with that. It's not life or death. But the master said, I suffered for that too. It's no longer you judging whether you should or not. It's no longer you judging there's people who are worse than you. You're here on blood pressure medicine. You have high blood pressure. And you can't live without taking medication. All of America is medicated. 
You can come out of that. You were healed years ago, but you're stuck on 30% healing. You tell people, my back used to be horrible, but I went to this crusade and it's been, you know, it's been like I'm 70% for three years. Well, then maybe that's too long. The steady pressure. Come on, say every yoke can break. Every nah, yoke. he didn't say it right. Every yoke, every yoke. can break every yoke. with steady pressure. You, you see, you have to want this more than me. You have to not want to have MS. Someone here has early signs of MS. You're in the meeting tonight. Who is this? Early signs of MS in the service. Some kind of early signals of multiple sclerosis. You're in this service. You're here. I want you to come quickly. Can we really, we're not going to be late. We're not going to be late, but I want you to come. Don't be embarrassed. Here we get into that embarrassed thing again. Just own it for a moment. Just own it for a moment. I'm not claiming it. I'm not going to claim that word of knowledge. Own it for a moment. Just enough to get God released in your life. Oh, my. Give me that blonde lady right here with the blue on you. The lights here don't prevent me from seeing people clearly, so... Make my life what it ought. Oh, you're limping, man. What's the matter? You what? A, you had a partial hip replacement? Uh huh. Yes. And? I, I'm just limping all the time, uh, pain all the time. And Even with the hip replacement? Yes. Ringing, all this stuff. You're tired of that? Yes. Where do you go to church? great church, isn't it? His power's all over you. You feel it, don't you? Huh? Why would he do that? Because he's healing you. This crooked's being made straight. He's fixing the gap, that power. Make my life what it ought to be. Come on, Holy Spirit. So I don't want you to use tonight's meeting to not come or to come and hide. I don't want you to do that. Well, I don't want to go there because I'll get called out. What about if God wants to call you out? I mean, who's in charge? Maybe that's probably part of the reason. I was called out of a balcony with cancer. I didn't want to go. But Miss Coleman was not always nice. <laughs> Stretch it, lady. Do it. Do what you couldn't do. Do what you couldn't do. Oh, my God. Something's going on here with this lady. If you're watching by streaming tonight, I'm not sure where that camera is. Is it behind me? Or? I'm inviting you to come out to these meetings. Get here somehow. It would be well worth Uber to get you here, I'll tell you. Get here to these services. I, we're expecting tomorrow, Tuesday, Wednesday, my word, Thursday, Friday. What's going to happen to us? Who's going to recognize you? <laughs> Grandma, what happened to you? My, what a big glow you have, Grandma. <laughs> Let's help her up. Help her up, guys. I don't know her name, so you can... Kathy? Come on, Kathy. Where's that pain at, Kathy? It's gone. It's what? It's gone. Somebody! Like, oh, I'm 
march like a soldier. It's it. Come on. Of the goodness of God. And all my life you have been faithful. No pain. And all my life. You're walking better. You're walking better. With every breath. Little steps, little steps like that. Come on. Oh, I I... Come on, of the goodness. Of the goodness of God. All my life, everybody, come on. Oh. And all my life you have been faithful. Look at you. No pain. And all my life you have been so, so good. Every breath. With every See, listen to me. I mean, in a moment, my job with her is officially over. Yeah. Right. Yeah, that's right. So, so now she can do what she needs to do. She's got to get calling on him. She's got to get some people covering her with some prayers. She's got to be reminding and reading some of those scriptures. The reason Jesus had results is because he was the word before he spoke the word. We're not the word. So we speak it, we, we, we speak that, and the more we speak it, the more it does get inside of us. And that word then begins to inhabit us. It abides in us. It gets in your DNA. It'll prevent you from future things. It'll tame your tongue. It'll stop the cursing. That's the hot coal right on your tongue. You know, you will like the new you. The people that live with you, they will love the new you. Amazing, isn't it? You good? A little pain still. Okay. What I want you to do is just work with this, with, with emotion. Nothing heavy. She's so excited. Just <laughs> happy about this. Yes. Just, yes. just like little Mo in Jesus' name, the, keep Jesus in it. This is not just Pilates. This is not just treadmill stuff. This is Holy Ghost stuff. Come on, say, dear Jesus, Holy Ghost, moving in my body. I got the flow of God in me. I got a river of life coming out of me. Come on, somebody give God a shout. Come on. The more she does that, that leg will correct itself. It will. God just picked her right out of obscurity. Right out of that man right behind her with the little goatee. It's a, it's a white. Yeah, you, sir. Come up quickly. Who's with you, sir? Bring the person that's with you with you. That didn't sound right, but. Good to have both of you tonight. Where are you from? Right here? Where do you go to church? Church on the move. Church on the move. So what, how do you like this meeting tonight? Awesome. What do you need tonight? <coughs> Talk to me. I have a heart to be a pastor and a teacher. And I'm, I'm blowing it. I'm You're what now? I have a heart to be a pastor and a teacher. You have a heart to be a pastor. Yes. And I was. And you I, was a pastor. Mm -hmm. Let pride get involved in some things. And I, I, so you stepped out of the pastorate. How long have you been out of it? You've been out of it for 30, so you... No, 10 or 13. 10. 10 to 13 years. 10 to 13 years. Mm -hmm. You miss it. Very you much. feel the drawback. Yeah, I had a great anointing on me at one 
You had a teach. great anointing on you. Then you'll be miserable, sir. Yes, I am. Is he miserable? Yeah. <laughs> Put your hands up, both of you. Put your hands up. Here's what it said. Elijah was on the Mount Carmel, and he said, when the fire fell, even the wet wood began to burn. The stones began to burn. Things that were inflammable, things that were fire resistant, seemingly in the natural, caught fire again. God said, your wet wood's about to catch fire. Oh, you better give them a harder clap than that, I'll tell you what. Come on. Your re-entry into this is right on time, and you're going to join a team somewhere. You're not going to do it on your own. You're not going to be back like as the main guy, but you're going to begin serving in a church again. You hear me? And that's just going to get, you're going to get around it and get impartation, get encouragement, and then within one year, you'll be back in the saddle. Within one year. Come on, somebody give God. Come on, somebody give God a shout. say the word of God is a book of results. It's not just revelation and anointing. It's a book of results. If you put your whole life, it's a lamp to your feet. What's that mean? It's results. It will direct your path. Your faith will grow. What you're afraid of, you'll be afraid of no more. Only as much of that book as in you can you qualify. Get it in you. Get you in it. Quit sitting down in your little green chair and, well, we're doing this today. I mean, approach it like it's the Word of God that it is. Read it and then let it do something. Tremble. Fall under the power. Call on them. Claim the healing right there. Declare your whole family to be free from the curse. I mean, how can anything... God needs something to work with. He needs a handful. He needs a loaf and a fish, a fish and a loaf. He needs a little bit to work with. He turned water into wine with no grapes. Who needs grapes when God's involved? Come on. You have enough. You have enough. You're alive in this hour, not because you've been so good. We know that. I'm not here because I've been so good. We're here because God's so good. He's wanting you to really trust him that the close calls you've had, the near misses you've had, the surgeries you've come through, the anesthesias you've had, and you're still here. COVID, you're still here. Over a million people, you're here tonight. Come on, somebody. I love this right here, this restoration. We, we're not, the church isn't good at this, but God is. God's very good at this. You've been a big encouragement to him. I know you have. She's really been pushing you for this. Come here a minute. Tell me what I tell me what the Lord said to you. I want you to rehearse it. What did he say? You can't even stand either, dear Lord. Look at this. Let her go. Just let her go. It's very strong down here. I'll tell you, it's very, very strong right in this area. You see her shaking? She's being healed. You thought you took all of the abuse. She did too. She never told you all that she took in. She covered you. You married right. You married, how many? 47. 47 years. Mm -hmm. She'd give her life for you. She has. This time around, it's going to be different. It's not you, it's both. Both one is oil and one is wine, both. 
His name is Jesus. 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 There's just something. Oh, the power of God. Come on, every hand up. Say it, Master. Master. Come on, say Savior. Mighty Jesus. Like that fragrance, like the fragrance after, after the rain. Come on, his name, Jesus. Mighty touch, Jesus. Mighty touch, Jesus. Let all heaven, Let all heaven and earth. And earth. a man here there's been blood in your urine when you urinate there's been some blood in your urine you're in the building tonight I want you to come come on get out of your seat come down quickly I don't want, I can't wait all night it's too late for that come to me there's been some blood in your urine and you're in the meeting tonight hello hello I'm waiting I'm just waiting I know that's a little tough but hey I can't wait much longer for that I could probably come and put my hand on you. Hurry up. Come on down here. Come on down. Come on, young man. Give him a God bless you. Come on. Thank you. First of all, thank you. How long has this been taking place? Boy, it, it hasn't been lately. It was previously. So, okay. So I just, I still have the opportunity to put that way. Yeah. Yeah. Put your hand up. You're very tender. Very tender. Not now, not next week, not tomorrow, not your whole life. Cancer has no room in you. The tormenting of cancer coming into your body, the fear of every time, the thought when you go to the bathroom, on and on, there will be no more blood in your urine. And there will never be cancer all the days of your life. Come on, somebody give God a... Somebody give him a mighty praise. Come on. Somebody give him a praise. Somebody had to say, let the people go. Somebody had to say that. That's your job. Somebody got to resist the evil. Somebody has to say, not on my watch. Somebody has to say, I'll beat you with a confession or a vote in the voting box. Come on, somebody. We have to be proactive. That's who we are. We're not, Jesus wasn't a silent objector. He was a disturber of the status quo. He loved to irritate the Pharisees. He loved it. He'd go through the cornfield and just start rubbing stuff on the Sabbath. Just uh, He'd heal purposely on the Sabbath. He had the man that was healed at Bethesda pick up your bed and walk. And, and as he was walking out, they said, hey, hey, don't you know today's the Sabbath? And then he said to those people, hey, this guy that just healed me, he can tell me to do anything he wants. He became healer and Lord in one moment. <laughs> the reason that a lot of us are getting into the same difficulty he's savior but he's not lord and you're still making a lot of decisions independent of him surrender everything lay in this hour i mean this is such a crazy time we're living and you need to be alive you need to be strong who wants to be 100 years old but you don't know anybody come on 
Who wants to be 93, but you can't eat ice cream? Come on, somebody help me here. <laughs> right? Oh, he's in this place. I'm so excited we're here for how many more meetings, Pastor? Dear Jesus. I keep reminding I did sign up for this, right? <clears throat> it's his fault. He gets all the credit. Amazing. Amazing. It's amazing. God's so good. This guy here, it's all broken. It took him a while to get down here. We're hesitant. We're hesitant. Not here to hurt you. Here to help you. Mm. Amazing. So amazing. Isn't it amazing? I marvel at it. Give me the blonde here with the glasses. You're a singer, aren't you? Aren't you a singer? What do you do here? Oh, my, 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 my. Put your hands up. Oh, my, I didn't recognize you guys. Well, come on, stand by your wife, Pastor. You snuck right in here. Incognito. They passed her and you followed. You know this couple right here? Put your hands up. There's change coming. A lot of change. And ideas that have really were been prohibited before. God's bringing them around again. And this fresh level of vision that's about to hit your life is, it's tornadic. It's not some quiet little stream that's going to flow through you and touch grandmas and grandpas. This is the mighty force of righteousness. It's going to hit your, your parents. It's going to hit your leadership. This church is going to get thrown into meetings like you've never seen before. And some of them will go into the afternoon and into the evening. And this will be the church in the wilderness. This will be a table that God will set for people to come from far away to find refreshing. Obey this and there'll be nowhere to put the people. Obey this. You won't have to go. And no gimmicks. No gimmicks. No gimmicks. No gimmicks. But the cloud will rest over your church. The cloud will rest over your church. Come on, somebody give God a shout. Come on. Come on, give him a mighty praise. I'm going to go nine more minutes, nine more minutes. Fibroids, somebody with fibroids, a lady here with fibroid tumors being healed. Where are you with the fibroids? Come quickly. I can't wait. It's only nine minutes to go. Come on, please come. Please come. Oh, here she is. Fibroids being healed, this right you? Being wonderfully touched by the Holy Ghost. Being wonderfully touched by... The... Somebody better give God a shout. Come on. Come on, somebody. Fibroids. There won't even be a bump. There won't even be a lump. There won't be any pain. Is this fibroids? How long have you had these? Nine months. Nine months. How many do you have? Many? A couple? I, I don't know for sure. They inside or outside? Inside. You can't feel them? But they hurt. They're hurting now. They're not hurting right now. They're not hurting right now. When do they hurt? This afternoon. Well, they won't hurt no more. Because they won't be there. By that mighty power. Come on, somebody give God a shout. Wow. Come on, give him a mighty praise. Somebody's having a lot of swelling around your feet, your legs. You take water pills, by the way. You're taking some water pills to help stabilize this. Where are you? Come to me. Water pills. Who is this? Who is this? I'm waiting. That swelling is what you take from your, for your legs. That's serious with the legs. More heart attacks happen with your legs than, oh my, is this? Bring her to me. 
I'm so glad you're here, ma'am. I'm so glad you're here. Thank you. You're taking water pills? Yes. Then tell me why. I had a heart attack. You had a heart attack. And um, my not operable. It's what now? My, I wasn't operable. So now... Not operable. So now my heart function has declined to the point that I'm on hospice. You're on hospice because of that. You're, but I do take water. You're the husband. Huh? I take water pills. Well, you know, this... Uh, Ma'am, let me inform you about something here. This is about to change. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. I'm having a lot of trouble eating because the doctor says that my blood flow is so low. It's That's because you're not doing enough housework. It's not. <laughs> it's, we got to get back to housework. It's not uh, supplying Would blood you hear to what my I'm organs. Saying? It's yes. over. It's over. This is over. Pow! The Holy Ghost. Somebody better give God a shout here tonight. Put that arm back over your head. Get, put that arm back over your head. Put it back over your Oh, my God. Put them both back over your head. Somebody better give God a shout. What's your wife's name? Jennifer. Jennifer, that's him moving all through you. I love the Holy Spirit. I love the way he, he works in your leader here. He, your leader's not going to let any nonsense take place here. Jennifer, that's, how long have you been married to Jennifer? Ten years. Jennifer, can you hear me? How do you feel down there? Your arm is what? It's not hurting like oh! it was. If you don't shape up, I'm going to have clapping lessons here tomorrow morning. Come on, somebody. Give them some praise. That's okay. You're moving it, though. Pick it back up your, over your head again. You haven't used it. That's why. Those are muscles just getting, getting better prepared to do more housework. <laughs> those dishes will help you stay in shape, I'll tell you that. A little bit of dusting and watering those plants. Pick her up. Pick up Jennifer. Carefully, guys, carefully. I love that hand. It's not frozen to her side. No, just be sensitive. That's okay. It's all part of the healing process, ma'am. You're doing what you weren't doing before. You came up, that arm was frozen to your side. That's okay. That's okay. Sometimes there's a little bit, of, it's called healing pain. That's okay. You're stretching those muscles. Pick her up underneath, carefully. I believe in miracles. For you put that up. Come on. Oh! I came on one. I believe in miracles. I've seen a soul set free. Come on, miraculous. Look at me, look at me, look at me. Redeem. Redeem. Look at you. I've seen the lead. Under. Under. Up through. Up through the stubborn song. me. This is amazing what's happening to you. It's amazing. You're being healed. We laugh about the housework, but God wants you to do it. I don't know how long 
laundry that I have to keep. You what? I have a lot of laundry to keep. A lot with. of laundry. My husband goes through a lot of clothes. Your husband does that too. He's touched you tonight. What do you I, think of that? I believe it. Yeah. I know you I are. came expecting something. There, that's I it. Just, Where do you go to church? Here. Okay. Yeah. It's a wonderful place to be. Yes, it is. But see, I'm, I'm here. See, you know what I just thought of? I can keep track of some of you this week. Yeah. <laughs> see, in and out, I don't know what. Oh. The teacher's in the house for five days. When they say, how many days is it, Paul, that you, you create a habit? <laughs> Five days. Come on, put your hands up. Say some holy habits are coming. Come on. Holy habits are coming. Better holy habits. Better holy habits. That'll keep me. That'll keep me. And sustain me. Sustain all my life. All my life. No more visits. No more into the dark place. Into the dark place. I'm getting delivered. I'm getting delivered. From every dark place. From every dark Come place. Come on, say every sentence of death. Every sentence of death. Come on, say every fearful moment. Every fearful moment. I'm being delivered I'm being by delivered. the hand of God. Give him a shout today. Yeah. Hallelujah. How many people is glad you came tonight? Amen. Just take your seats just for two minutes. Come over here. Praise the Lord. Also, to everyone watching online, there's hundreds of this people that are touch. watching this right now. Wow. Amen. And rejoicing with this us in what God is actually wow. doing in front of our wow. eyes. And, I, you know, you've just seen this couple. Well, I got out of my vehicle tonight, and I, I saw Michael, and I said, Michael, how's it going? And asked him about his wife. And I said, you know, I believe this week is the week wow, for the turnaround. I want you to shut it out. This is the week for the turnaround. Now, I know everybody's been like, we have so many services. <laughs> but how many people ever heard of a man called Kenneth e. Hagen? It's Tulsa, right? But you would be surprised. What Brother Hagen would say, it wouldn't happen you know, in a way that it, it needed to happen until multiple services, one after the other, after the other, after the other, after the other. And he says sometimes it would take six weeks before miracles would break out. Well, I'm believing after eight services, some of our lives are never going to be the same again in Jesus' name. Do you believe with me tonight? Amen. My faith was that we could have services like this. And I believe that God did this and that God is doing this so that we can have, amen, his presence, his power in and through our lives. Amen. So we're going to bless, amen, the kingdom of God tonight. We're going to pour into Pastor Billy's life. There was an envelope on your seat, I believe, so that you can give. How many people believe this is great ground for you to sow in? Amen. How many people has ever bought something from Amazon? Wave at me right now. You see, some people think we're too old for techie stuff, right? But look at you all. You've been buying from Amazon right there from your armchair. And you know what? You were able to trust it. You know what? If you can buy something from Amazon from your phone, amen, you can give tonight into the kingdom of God from your phone also. Right behind me on the screen, amen, you're going to see... Uh, QR codes, you can give by cash app, you can give by uh, text to give. Text to give is the easiest way to give, and it's 84321. And I, I'd like us all to give something tonight. And those that are watching online, wherever you're from, hundreds of people, amen, right there from your armchair, right there from your couch, amen, I'm sure that you've bought hundreds, if not thousands of dollars of stuff from online shopping. And tonight, You've been watching what God is doing in just a simple building here in Tulsa, Oklahoma. And you know, just by pressing 84321 in your text to give and follow the prompts, you can not buy something tonight, but you can give something tonight. You can give into the kingdom of God so that we can see stuff like this happen more and more and more. I was talking to Pastor Billy earlier 
I mean, even just doing what we do, it takes more money than what people would ever, ever consider. And to do what they do, I can't even imagine what it does to take Billy and Melanie around the world. And I tell you, more and more people are desiring for them to come. And we want to be part of that. We want to sow into their lives. Amen? Truly, guys, what's $20? What's $50? What's $100? Truly, what is it? You go out for a meal right now, what is it? So tonight, this skip meal, this skip dinner, this fast. How many people knows the fast will do you good? Praise the Lord. And so into the kingdom of God, I believe that the best is yet to come. And the goodness of God is manifesting in our lives in Jesus' precious name. So tonight, let's do something. Let's see somebody else's life touched. Let's see somebody else's life helped. And tomorrow morning, we're going to come back at 10 o'clock and we're going to do it all over again. But not what God did on Monday night. Amen. You're the diehard crowd. You're the Monday night crowd. You came. And I know more and more people will come throughout the week. But now because of technology, there's more watching online than there was in the house. But we need you that are watching to come because of the corporate anointing that is produced when people of God get together. How many people are grateful for that tonight? Something happens when we get together. So are you ready to give unto the Lord tonight? You can make your checks payable to LRMC. Everybody say that, LRMC. We will absolutely bless Billy in the name of Jesus because we believe and we have seen over these last years that they are tremendous ground to sow into. Amen. But if you don't want to give check tonight, amen, simply text to give 84321 or give by the way of Cash App, dollar sign, Millennial Church. Amen. You can now give by PayPal, wherever you are in the world. And also, you can now give by Venmo. It's amazing. Amazing that we can get seed in the ground and see the harvest of God manifested regardless of where we are on the earth in Jesus' precious name. So I want us all to give something tonight. I know we've got our seed. Amen. Come on. Let's all of us do something tonight and to see God's goodness manifested in Jesus' precious name. Father, in your presence tonight, there's fullness of joy. Father, we just thank you for every person that's helped behind the scenes to make this possible. To drive onto your parking lot, Father God, of a facility as such as this, to walk in these doors and to know that there's hundreds of people every single week that is making this work behind the scenes called the Ministry of Helps. Father, we're grateful for them. I ask you to bless them this week. Touch them. Touch their families for sowing their time and touch their children for Father Borstamaya, their parents being used in the house of the Lord. We give you all the glory, all the honor, and all the praise. And everybody said a big amen. Ushers, go ahead and pass the buckets tonight. Amen. Thank you, guys. Amen. So, as you've heard tonight, we have eight more meetings. Everybody say that, eight more meetings. Tomorrow morning at 10 a.m. Everybody say 10. If you're from Texas, say 10. If you're from Oklahoma, say 10. If you're from Ireland, 10. Tomorrow morning, 10 o'clock. Tomorrow night, 7 o'clock. Tomorrow night is our uh, weekly prayer meeting here. So I tell you, children's ministry will be on. Amen. So if you've got children or grandchildren, bring them. And let's put them into children's ministries. You come into your youth will be on. I believe youth is coming into service tomorrow night. No. Youth is not coming in. They're bowling. Oh, praise the Lord. Well, they'll be healed as they bowl in the name of Jesus. What a week to go bowling. Hallelujah. Amen. Tomorrow night, 7 o'clock. Wednesday, 10 a.m. Wednesday night, 7 p.m. Thursday morning, 10 a.m. Thursday night, Friday morning, Friday night, Saturday morning, sleep in. Praise the Lord. 
No, tomorrow morning we'll be in the upstairs chapel, ladies and gentlemen. You can enter through these doors or enter through the, through the doors on the top floor, and we will see you in the morning. The Lord bless you. The Lord keep you. The Lord makes his face to shine upon you and give you peace. Thank you for coming tonight, and thank you for making this possible, and thank you for bringing your faith and the spirit of faith, because I believe, therefore I speak. And I believe the best is yet to come. God bless you, everyone. Spend some time with each other. Have some fellowship with each other. And enjoy the presence of the Lord. Thank you for being here tonight. Enjoy that God is doing great things in the midst of his people.